we've got to replace this carpet. It's horrible. It's threadbare. It's had carpet, carpet beetle attacks, everything. It's got to go. So you see, I've already started on this half. What I'm going to do is going to pull up this half and then we're going to have to hard board over it before the new carpet comes down. I'm not going to refinish the floor in here. I'm just going to board over with hardboard because it's not great, but it's not terrible. So I'll pull the carpet and the underlay up. Comes up very easily. Thankfully, it's not been stapled down. We just roll it up and then hopefully it'll keep all the dirt entrapped when we carry it downstairs. Next, I'll take all the tack strip up around the edge. The carpet around the edge is held in place by these grip strips, which are nails pointing up. So we'll just take those up now. For this, I use cat's paw pry bar and I'll just work through the nails. just pop off you see the nails that help grip the carpet so I just work my way around now I just share with you the guy who was here before pulling this tack strip up and we've got a piece of pine infill that was used in the corner and it's not held in at all the only thing that's holding it in is the actual tack strip Ridiculous. Something else on the to-do list before I uh, board over. Another problem we've got here is a very loose floorboard. This has been done when they fitted the cables, so we need to secure this before we can move on prepping the floor. I'll show you what's underneath. This is underneath those boards. You can see they've hacked out into the top of the joist to run the cables. It's one of the reasons why you should always nail at the edge of the joist because if electricians or plumbers they typically go in the middle so if you'd put a screw here the chances of hitting something are a lot higher than here or here. What we're going to do is we're going to put another piece of wood underneath this space. This is the piece of wood we're going to put in so we'll slip it in. It's up there. Now we'll put a screw in here and here, and that means we can then screw in down here. Now we've got this extra piece of wood here and I'm going to screw down to this and to this and to this but making sure I stick close to the edges. There we go. Old skinny bits of plywood are never good news on floors like this. I've had this one up and what we've got underneath is a crumbled mess of floorboards left from our cable fitters again. What I'm going to try and do is fit in a piece and again brace underneath. But as we've not got much space here I'm going to try and put a ledge against this joist which will give this cross piece something to rest on. So I'll have a try at that now. So we've got our ledge tacks to our main 
uh, Bresma here. Bresma is the large uh, perpendicular wooden beam that all the joists run off. So we've got the ledge there. I'm going to put a piece of blocking in here, which will give us something to fix the floorboard to. I'll screw that up here and then screw it down here. There we go, let's pull that up nicely. So we've got our replacement section cut to fit, let's just ever so easy with a sharp knife. These are carbide snap-on, snap-off blades, they're really good. Um, and then just a straight edge, this is just a aluminium straight edge, and then multiple passes. Make the first pass nice and light so it doesn't skip, and then just keep building up. All too much pressure will do is make the knife jump. As the groove gets established, you can apply more pressure. And that's through. and tacks down with carpet tacks. I put a few staples in just to help keep the sheet here while I uh, nail it in and then I go over with staples afterwards if there's any bits that just need help fairing out. Then just little carpet tacks but because the carpet tacks are shorter than my fingers I have to use pliers otherwise I squish my fingers. Just work around the perimeter and then across the middle. There we go, all boarded out and ready for carpet now. Carpet once I finish the rest of the room of course. <laughs>